Today I'm going to just do a short video on replacing of damaged screws, gun screws. Now I'm, at, I'm just uh, in the process of doing a, um, a review and repair video on Noble 275 22 rifle, it's an American made rifle and it's got two of these little screws which are, have damaged threads which need replacing in it. Um, so rather than put it in that video, I thought I'd just do a general video about replacing screws while I go about doing it. So we'll take this front one out. Because it's sort of a difficult thing, I mean, you have to have these tight for the action to work correctly because it actually these screws hold the whole thing together but I can see you know like in the past people have gone to put them up tight so that they're tight and then of course because it's only going into a tiny little you can see how thick that little tiny bit of metal um, thread of metal is it just strips, strips well it's, luckily I think it's stripped the screws rather than the actual um, receiver. So then the whole thing can come down like that and slide out. So and then we've got this here. So this will slide. Okay, just wiggle it back and up and down, and the whole that will come out. And then there's one piece of uh, that's the little kind of thing. Now. If you're in the USA, often if you need new screws, you'll be able to get second-hand ones or replacement ones from Gun Parts Corporation. Gun Parts Corporation actually lists this screw, as you can see, for $2.50. However, they won't send internationally anymore, so there's no way of actually accessing it. So I've got no choice to but to make a new one. Screw sizes, either numbered, whether just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, I think, and they're a standard size. Um, and then after that, they go to um, fractional, so you know, like 1 8th or 1 quarter or 732s or whatever. Um, the other thing that you need to know about is the thread pitch, um, which is the actual fineness of the actual threads on the screw. Now, in imperial measurements, so an American made firearm and a lot of British made ones um, will be imperial. So if this is a numbered screw, we can measure the diameter and work out what size screw it is. And then we can also use a pitch gauge, which there's this thing here, and measure the actual pitch. Now, in if the, if the firearm was made in Europe or Japan, it's most likely going to have metric. So it's going to be like three or three and a half millimeter or something shaft, most likely, and then have a metric, metric thread. So in Imperial, the threads are measured in TPI or threads per inch. So it's the number of times that goes around and around in an inch length of the, uh, of the bolt. Whereas in metric threads, it tends to be measured by pitch. So, it might be say 0.4 and that what that means is one complete turn of the thread will encompass 0.4 millimeters of the length of the screw so it's a bit more kind of hard to understand that one so i'm not going to go into this too much there's whole books and everything on it if you want to know but you just have to know the basic concepts so let's have a look at this screw it's from an american made noble made in haydenville massachusetts probably in the 1960s or 70s. Oh, no, actually, it was in the 60s. They went bust in 1971. So it would have been made in the 60s. So first thing to do is measure the shaft of the screw. So, and we'll measure it in inches because it's a imperial screw. So that's about 0.1 pretty much I'm actually right up near the head there let's just do it a bit more accurately down here a bit further 
so it's pretty much 0.125 just a touch a little touch smaller but 0.125 and if you look at your screw um, diameter table a 0.125 screw is one eighth of an inch uh, and that is equates to a number five now the most generally these screws come in two different pictures they come in unc which is a coarse thread and they come in unf which is a fine thread um, and quite, uh, some of them are, you know, are much more common than others a very common gun thread i just know from experience is 540 so five number five which is one eighth of an inch and 40 threads per inch so it's a bit difficult for me to do this with the camera but i've already checked this see this thing here so the first thing we'll do is actually hang on, i've just got to find the find the camera thing there we go so the first thing to do is find it says he's got a whole heap of different sizes on him find the number 40 so there it is there and then if you get that and i can't really show you exactly but if you put that into the the thread and ho what i usually do is hold up to the light so you can see and if the pitch is right the little points will go down into into all the grooves and you virtually if you hold up the light you won't be able to see any light between it so that's that and that's the case in this case so this this screw here is a 540 it means that um, unless you're going to cut the thread on the on the lay which is probably more trouble than it's worth the easiest thing to do is get a little die a 540 die so then you can turn the screw up in the lathe and then cut the thread with the die so that's what i'm going to do so the first thing we've got to do is get a piece of steel now what i do uh, i've got a little mini lay uh, and i went to the local steel supplier and i bought a whole heap of this what's called free machining steel it's actually an alloy that's made so that it cuts really cleanly in the lay and then it, it, you have to buy it in three meter length so um so what i did was uh, I, I just bought three meters of um about five different size this is the smaller size um it's probably six mil i would say um and um if you look at this it's pretty much exactly the right size for that screw head so um, it means a minimum of machining um, so I'm just going to cut a cut a couple of pieces of that off um, to use in the lathe All right, that actually measures point. I just went a little bit faster, point one two three, but that's pretty close. So, um, so I'm just going to make blanks because I haven't got dies at the moment. So I'm going to make blanks for the two, the two screws, and I can uh, do everything except thread them. And then when I get the dies, I'll thread them.
Okay, where they are there. That's point one two nine. So I might just take point two. We're going one thou under is one two four. So that's alright, we've got a point one two three and a point one two four. So that's pretty close, I think. Right, so now what we've got to do is we've got to work out what the angle is to cut this shoulder. Cut the shoulder of the uh, of the screw. The head will be here. So um we'll leave this part on because we need to be able to hold in the lathe. So we'll leave this part on until the thread's cut. Uh, and everything and then we can just cut it off and then we can face the face the screw off on the lathe and cut the slot but I still haven't got a, a die for it yet so um, that's not going to happen till I get a die now the next step uh, is to measure the angle of this screw head because we need to be able to set the uh, headstock on the lathe to cut the angle now what I'm using to do this is this little gadget here. What we can do is bring this around here. So it's somewhere, it looks to me somewhere between 30 and 45. So if we come around, so it's actually going to be from, from uh, 180. So that's, 10, so that's 50. So if we just, Get that so obviously the shaft is going to line up with the top here so if we just uh oops hang on bring it over here so you can see in the camera it's, it's a bit tricky this so that's it about there so so that's pretty much Yeah, actually, so there's 130. So that's that there is 10, 20, 30. So that's 45. Because 145, so it's 180 minus 45. So that's 45 degree angle there. And if we see if we can see this a bit better, just playing it by eye. If I just line that edge up with that, you can see that screw is pretty much parallel with the top. So, um, so it is a 45 degree angle pretty much. So, um, so that's a good, so I can just, I can set the head stuck on the lathe to 45 degrees and cut that shoulder on both the screws. So to cut the taper on the uh, ends of these screws, we just need to turn the head stock around um, 45 degrees So what we'll do with that is we'll undo this screw Let's get the light out of the way for a minute and This will come off and We have a key way in there which is a precision And we'll just get a bit of that out of the way and we'll put this back on again If we can find the hole There we go. Now, fifteen thirty. That's forty-five there. So we'll 
just tighten this up here. All right, I'll chuck one of these in the lathe. One of these days I've got to give this lathe a bit of a clean up. Let's give it a turn grotty. Right on. Now we'll just move you over this side to get a view from over here. I don't know if you can see that, a bit of light on the subject. All we need to do is put the thread on the end here, cut it to length, and then cut it off here. And then we can put that in the lathe there, face the end off, cut the slot, and then we'll have a nice new screw. All right, so um, we're set up here to cut the thread on these um, proto screws. Now this is actually a die holder. It will either hold a one inch or a 13 16 die. It's got, there's the, has an insert, there's the insert for when you want to use the 13 16 um, And it also has a floating adjustment. So you can actually if you put whatever in here, if the die doesn't quite centre, you can actually undo these screws at the back uh, and it will float and you can get it set up centred and then do these up so you know you're cutting your, cutting your threads nice and centred. It's probably not so important, something like this, but if you're making some sort of more precision component. Alright, so we'll put that there. Now the thing with doing this is you've got to allow... I found that you have to allow um, the ability of this whole carriage to move as you're making the thread. So you're going to make sure this isn't hard up against here, because otherwise what happens, this will stop and it will start tearing the threads. So it takes a bit of a trick to do a bit of feeling, but basically put a bit of lube on there. Now you don't turn the lathe on. I've got actually got the lathe unplugged for safety. But we've got this big, uh, I don't know if you can see it, actually I'll just show you. We've got this big handle here. Oops, I was just on the edge of the table with the, with the tripod. We've got this big handle here which I can use to uh, put a bit of torque on and uh, turn it. So what I'm going to do, oh here's pillow. This is pillow, I'll just show you pillow. <coughs> You've probably seen pillow before when he was a... There he is. When he was a young kitten, he featured in my uh, 1894 Winchester um, repair video. So if you haven't seen that, um, you can have a look at it if you like cats. But um, he's very curious. He likes coming and seeing what the hell is going on. So I'll just get this tripod set up again. I might even try zooming in a little bit on this just give us a sec it's just a bit tricky this because i'm kind of on the go watch out Pill. i'm kind of on the edge of the table all right so that's pretty good i think now so what we're going to do is i've got to put pressure on this while i start it cutting it tends to because you're not putting a lot of pressure that's actually on a on a taper fitting but I can see I'm starting to get some metal cut 
here. So we'll back it off a bit to clear the chips. Of course, you could just put the screw in a, in a vise if you didn't have a lathe and just cut it with the um, uh, with a die and a die holder. But this is just a m way to make it more concentric. So let's just double check. So I'm going to pull back on that. There we go. So we can see we've got our threads starting. Get rid of a few chips. Put that on there. Once you get a few threads on there, as long as this can move freely then you don't need to push it anymore because it'll kind of pull it's just important at the start if you don't if you're not putting positive pressure on especially with small threads it can tend to tear the thread right, let's back off a bit see where we're up to I'll find um, one of the original screws. Oh, there it is there. I thought I had one here somewhere. So we'll try to cut the three because we went, there's, there's, these bolts are a bit over length. So do this so you can see the thread. So you can see we've got about another, I don't know, five or six threads to go to get back to the same level there so obviously i'm gonna to have to shorten the screw but it's better to make them too everything too long for a start than too short I reckon that'll do because uh, you know that it was on this one it was only really the very end of the thread that was trying to thread anyway so most of this is still with the thread it's probably miles more thread than, than you need on there so I've just cut the thread on this first screw obviously uh, it's largely finished we just got to cut it off shorten it to length and cut the slot but before we went any further I thought I'd better just double check the thread well, that I've got the thread correct, and also the um, the, the thread on the this action um, action housing assembly. So let's just see. Look at that. That thread's still okay in there. It's amazing when you have a screw with a thread that actually works. And we'll try this side. One's a bit tighter, but there we go. So that's nice and tight, that thread. There's no slop in that at all. So, so as long as I don't do up those screws too tightly, once they're finished, they should, they should hold in those holes quite snugly. All right, so now what we're going to, so I've cut this off with the, with the hacksaw. There we go. So I just got to face that off. And um, and then once we've got it faced off, we make sure it's sort of the right dimension to um, to fit in the action housing. So we just got to put this in here.
I, mean, I can make this probably even a bit longer in the head than the other one was. So I might just check it. So you can see instead of the other one, this one is virtually goes to a point there. So I've left a little bit on this one, but I might just screw it into the action screw and into the action housing and see see what it looks like. So you can see I still need to take some more off there. It obviously is sticking out, so it does have to have to have a very small head on it, enough so that it sits in that countersink. And then obviously I'm going to have to trim this this off as well. But that's all right. It's easier to leave it long for a start and then just trim it off at the end. So probably once I've done the slot, I can just trim it off and keep trying it until I get it perfect, and then do it for the same for the other one. So I've finished these screws now. Here we go, let's have a look at this. So I've turned and filed them down until they're flush with that. Cut slots in them, just using a hacksaw. Uh, there is actually special files, you can get slot files, they come in about three or four different sizes, but they're super expensive and uh, unless you're doing a really fine firearm where you're doing really straight, perfect slots, um, you can usually get away with a hacksaw. So uh, anyway, so I've I've carefully ground the ends of these off so that they're just snugged up, just slightly tight. That one's, you can see that one's not just short enough not to be sticking out there. And this one's just a little bit above sticking out, like probably half a mil, but that should go go down into the into the stock, all right, it's not, the fit's not that good. So um, so now what I've got to do is I'm going to flame blue them. So I might show you how to do that. So what we're going to need, do now is we're going to flame blue these screws um, just to give them a blue finish and give them a little bit of corrosion resistance. Now this is really easy to do. You can do it, you don't even need a proper torch. You can do it if you've got a gas stove at home, you can do it. Um, now, so what you do is you just find something to hold them with, but not a great big pair of pliers, something with fairly fine tips, because you want something that's not going to act as a heat sink. Because what you're trying to do is gradually heat up the part uh, and get a colour change to sort of deep blue purple before you stop. So the idea is just put it somewhere with you a little bit of light so you can sort of see and just make sure that it doesn't get too hot in any one area. So just gradually, gradually increase the heat. Okay, we're getting a bit of colour change there. Theoretically, it goes kind of straw and then yellow and then, you know, gradually increases colour, but I find the small parts are pretty hard to see. So you just keep gradually heating it up. You don't want it to go red hot. I think that's as good as we're going to get it. It's not particularly good. Sometimes you can get them to go really deep purple blue, but anyway, we'll just leave that at that. That one's actually pretty blue as well. Anyway, let's go in on the light. So the two screws are completed now. Here's the two new ones with nice crisp threads. Ground to size. I've left the ends kind of square because of the way that they only just go through the the um, 
to still plate. We don't want to we don't want to taper them in any way because we want you know to take the benefit of every bit of thread. And these are the two old buggered ones. So now we can put them, put the new ones into the action housing. So um, yeah, I don't think I don't know that there was much difference. I can I'll be able to tell if one's longer than the other or something. Actually, I can tell because the back one, I, I actually cut the, I cut the um, the slot a little bit deeper. Not at not on purpose, just so it happened to be that way. So at least I can tell them apart now. There we go. Nice and blued, in place, flush, threading in tightly. So if you're fixing a firearm and you find that you've got damaged or missing screws, it's pretty much the same, um, same procedure you go through. Obviously having the lathe is the, is the tricky bit, although you can actually buy those, I bought that one second hand, but you can buy micro lathes, you know, if you do a lot of gun mucking around, they're worth having just for little jobs like this. If you like this sort of content, please subscribe to my channel and push the like button. And until next time, thanks for watching.